the electric guitar. This iconic instrument has changed the way people play and listen to music. This is a Gaudin, Canadian company. This particular model was actually made in Canada. Parts assembled in the US of A. And today, we're going to change those pickups. Well, two of them anyway. The neck humbucker and the bridge humbucker are going to be swapped out from this passive configuration to an active Fishman influence, Fishman fluence, modern humbucker set. My brother already did the hard work of taking everything apart. Basically, nothing's attached anymore for, for the pickups. He took out all the electronics. So we have an empty shell. And we are going to retrofit those things into here. Change the wiring a little bit because... There's only two pod allocations for a volume and a tone, and uh, that set was designed for single volume, single tone each. But that doesn't matter. First thing we're going to do, if you look inside this cavity, you can see that there's uh, just a little bit of spray, paint overspray onto the wood, on the wood surface, meaning that there's no... Uh, there's no shielding from RF frequencies, radio frequencies coming into that cavity, which could cause, and does, it, it, does, it doesn't could, it will cause noise into the circuitry. So we're going to line that with copper. That's going to be step number one. So here we go. Tools that we're going to be using today. Copper tape. That's an inch thick. That's a quarter inch thick. Um, we'll vary for the strips and pieces we need to get in these contours there. I'll probably use the shorter stuff. Thinner, uh, the, the thinner stuff. This is a uh, paintbrush shaft that I'm going to be using to help push the copper into the cracks, to the crevices and the creases rather, and build that up all around. Help me work it into the corners. And also, I just noticed this cavity here that the uh, where the where the guitar gets plugged into can see that hole there that too is going to have to be lined so I'll have to take off this cap on that side pair of scissors to cut the tape let's go have some fun guys
So now that we've got copper pretty well everywhere inside the cavity, um, right up into where the wires are coming out, the bridge wire and the pickup wires are going to come out here. Now we're going to pop off this cap here and uh, put some copper in there. We'll trim this up, clean that all up really, really nice and neat. Do the back plate the inside of it anyway, and uh, we're good to go. Let's get that cap off. that hole all nice and covered up so we've got super shielding from the jack in to all the electronics and then the humbuckers they're going to be uh they're active so they're self they're 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 completely shielded okay we're going to go hole we're going to go uh okay we're going to clean the uh the edge now and i'm going to use a knife I'm not going to use a safety net. I'm just going to go freehand. Be very, very careful. Take your time. It's not a race. You want to leave a little bit over the edge. It doesn't have to go all the way up to the edge of the of the route in the guitar for the plate, but enough over so that when we put the lid on it, the cap, the back plate, it's going to make a nice Faraday cage. Here we go. Da -da -da. I see I missed a piece here 
So we're going to add that in right now. Now we added that last little bit and it looks really good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut out the holes and slot for the switch. Best way to do that is to gently indent just ever so gently the copper so you can make out the outline of the holes or the track down here I can see that one already and then you're going to take the same knife that we used to clean up and you're going to clean that up if you use the edge of it the edge of the wood of the guitar the hole if you can find that and you line up with that you can use that to uh, rotate your knife around and cut that hole back out You don't have to cut hard guys, if you're cutting hard, you're cutting wood, that ain't good. That's one. It literally is, it literally is like just cutting butter. There's absolutely zero resistance there. Might be a snag or two with the grain on the side of the uh, the hole. Not finished very well, but we'll do the job. Wow, that's looking good. Slot down here. Slot's done. I'll just gently push the knife in through the hole, the uh, the area where the screws are going to come through for the switch, just to like break the copper. I don't have to clean them up too terribly much. Oh yeah, there you are. Well, that's pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a rat tail file and I'm going to go through those holes with um, a little bit of friction going in and when I take it out ever so carefully remove it so that I don't pull off any of that copper sheeting. Go get a file, get ready. Before we go ahead and actually put the wires in for the new pickups and open the box, let's just check our grounding that we put in, the shielding for the uh, electronics cavity, make sure we have conductivity. Yeah, looks like we got a winner. This ultimately will become a ground, this is for the bridge. This is also going to go integrate to all this to make sure that the strings, the bridge and everything else, the keys, everything will be grounded. So this is it. These are the new pickups. Okay, so there's some electronics inside, potentiometers. There's two of them with push-pull switches. Those are probably 25K. Okay. 25k seems to be somewhat typical for <coughs> active pickups if you're going to go with uh, more passive pickups then you're looking at the 250 to the 500k uh, variety of potentiometers wow there's a whole slew of parts in here now
There's something relatively uh, new in pickups over the last few years. I haven't seen it for a while. Um, rather than have wires coming off the pickups, a lot of them have now just connectors. If you're familiar with computers and computer connectors, if you've ever built a PC before, you'll uh, quickly identify uh, these type of connectors. They're similar to the to the to the um, to the connectors you'd use on 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 back of a hard drive. <laughs> Did you find if it was a slave or master? So anyway, we've got two of these. I don't know if one is defined as bridge bridge and neck. Well, that's the position in the box they are. Modern Alnico, modern ceramic. Okay. So there's a difference between the two. Size-wise, they almost look identical. Mind you, this one feels like it could be a little bit smaller. Alnico. That would make sense if there was Alnico that that would go in the neck position. I give it like that old traditional Fender Alnico uh, Strat type setup. Yeah, nice. No instructions. <laughs> all right so we've opened the box we've got two pickups one seems to be alnico one seems to be identified as ceramic uh fishman fluence i've got what do we got here for cables okay we got a battery cable nine volt battery because this is going to be an active system so we're going to have to install a battery in this I've got two cables with a four pin head. I've got two cables with a three. It's got a red and a red. I think these ones are probably going to be connected to the battery. Yep, no doubt. And this little fella here, what's he for? Well, there's two of them too. This is a two header. And it's just a single wire. Okie dokie. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna pause this video. <laughs> I'm gonna do a little bit of research because um, kind of need to know a. Uh, I need a schematic. I need to, first off, I don't even know what these pinouts are for. So I'll start right there. We'll demystify that and we'll see what we can do about actually making this thing come together and make music again. Yeah. Interesting. We'll be back, folks. Based on the wiring diagram I just posted, that you guys can see, um, uh, I have provisions for the two pickups with a single volume and a single tone in a three-way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to follow that and connect the third pickup, the middle pickup, to a five-way switch and do everything basically as it's, as it's shown in that diagram. But... Uh, going to add a third pickup. Now if that doesn't work, I did see provisions for a Fluence pickup from Fishman to be put in put in this position. That there is a wiring diagram for that, but in this particular with a passive here, I don't know how that's going to go. Uh It's going to be interesting. Yeah. So uh that's what we're going to do. We're going to wire it up like that, guys. We'll get the pickups in installed first. So like that, we know how much wire we have slack on the on the on the cavity side. Before I start cutting wires, I'd rather have those things well seated into the guitar. And then once I have this uh, little bit of leftover, I'll know where to cut it in order to make it fit for the uh, for the rest of the um, 
whoops, the rest of the um, wiring. Yeah, here we go. Let's have some fun. Fishmans are installed. We'll put the rings on them to keep them in place now. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to recoup the rings off of uh, the old ones. This, incidentally, was the bridge position. That ring has a little bit of a slant on it. And it goes in like that, with the slant tilting towards the strings. This one was flush and flat, very thin. That one will go right in there. So we'll take those things apart and get them installed. Just gonna rough it in for now. Might be okay. All right. Red to the outside. Any click. Orange to the outside. Looks like we got ourselves a winner, winner, checking dinner. Tell you what. It's looking fine, Frank. Oh, yeah. Groovy, baby. So I'll clip the bolts first. So now we've got them all back in place, but the bolts are too long to fit into this body without altering, altering the body. So what we're going to do is we're going to alter the bolts and I'm going to remove the plugs again and we're going to cut off about a quarter of an inch on, uh, on those bolts. Do the same thing to this one. And then once we're done that, we'll be able to screw them back down to the body and turn it over and finish up the wiring. To shorten the bolts, it's not that complicated. Just grab them with uh, some Ed nippers like that. It's soft steel. Put that to the side, then just clip that off. That bolt is uh, instantly shorter. Same thing for this side. Yeah. That should fit right in the cavity now. Bingo! Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Tell you what. So rinse, repeat, and we'll now run the wiring for this uh, third pickup. Put that back in its position. This one here. I stripped down the end of the wire that was um, the ground so we know, which we, we know which one the shield is going to be. The ground for the connection, that's obviously going to be the other one. So let's get this installed. Here we go. So I salvaged the switch, the five-way switch from my brother's guitar. It was with his old electronics. We're going to re reuse that. And out of the kit that came uh, with the pickups, the according to the wiring configuration, we're going to go with single tone, push pull pot, and a volume, single volume. So we'll install that now. Put that down, make sure that's, whoops, screw in there. So there's a lock washer that goes on that. It's into the hole. And there's a washer. Goes on this side. Huh. 
we've hit yet another snag. It appears, it appears that the length of the shaft is not thick enough, not long enough in this sense, to, uh, to come through to the other side so that I can put the nut on it. So I'm going to remove this lock nut. We'll just put on the, uh, the lock washer. We'll see if that doesn't facilitate a better fit. Or at least give me some meat on the other side that I can latch onto. Yeah, that looks like that should be a lot better. So we'll just go with this lock washer. And let's see what we have on this side. Wow. I mean, I, I barely have enough. But I can make that fit. I can make that work. And we will. Let's put it in finger tight for now. I want to line it up on the other side so that the uh, it's pretty well centered where I want it to be. I want all the electronics connections to be on this side, point, pointing towards the volume, and that looks like what we're, we're going to have. So, yeah, we'll remove that nut too. And I'll grab the lock washer. Pop that on, the other not to close it. Over here. Roughly in that position there. This side, grab the lock washer, or just the regular washer rather than the nut. Put them on, hold that puppy in a place. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's where I want them to be and we'll lock them down in that position hmm. well, one wasn't as tight as the other one there and I'm using incidentally I'm using the box end side of that wrench to prevent any accidents from slippage there you don't want to score the face of your guitar and again if you guys aren't very comfortable doing a lot of work around your instrument or if you if it if it is a special case where you got something vintage that you're working on or hardly possessed pro uh, possessed yeah uh, a prize possession you might want to consider taping off the surface before you start doing any kind of uh, work like we're doing on this one here I'm uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty comfortable with what I'm doing here I, I've done these things before so I know my limitations and I know the type of guitar it's a great guitar I'm going to take good care of it, make sure nothing happens bad. But I don't feel the need or the requirement to start taping up the face. There you go. Those two pieces are installed. 
torqued down. They align themselves inside facing one another, which is going to facilitate a nice alignment or uh, short uh, paths for the uh, for the wires. Okay, so here's the five-way switch. Now, it still ha I just cl I just cut it out of the the um, old circuit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to install it in this way. And I'm going to just take those wires out. Incidentally, this switch kind of repeats itself like that. Those two pins there, I could practically, I could short them out. And this it becomes this, that become that pin is that pin, and that pin is that pin. So I'll, uh, that's the old ground wire. I'll install it like this. We'll, we'll, we'll pull it off, pull it out with the, uh, the soldering and iron, the soldering iron, those, those, those pieces once I'm, uh, I'm getting it out. I don't want to take it out just to do that for the sake of cleaning it up anyway. So, all right, let's get that switch in. Where are you? There you be. I'm lining up that screw hole. There we go. It's better. Hold that into place like that. One screw in. And I can actually just turn that over and finish it up from the front. Again, don't over tighten this. You'll crack the wood, put a huge blemish in your nice finish, and kick yourself in the ass for the rest of your, well, the time you own that instrument anyway. There you go. Five ways installed. Volume. Uh, the um, push pull switch is installed. Volume's installed. This will be your tone. That's your five way. We'll uh, we'll go ahead. We'll put this plug back in. Uh, no, you know what? I'll wait. I'll do that once I got everything wired. So now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time to get jiggy with this soldering iron. Yeah, let's have some fun. Here we go. Uh, set it up. All right, I'll get out the tools. So is it, these are the three wires for the center pickup. I put a uh, piece of heat shrink on them, colored green. And I'm just gonna toss that, put this, tuck that in behind the switch. Push that down, that should just stay there under its own, its own tension. These are the two red wires that are gonna feed the active uh, circuitry in those pickups. They're gonna come down this side and the battery is going to be fitting in this area here. So that's going to go there. We have these wires. These are going to go to one of them on each side is going to go to the switch. Oh, they're stuck together really good. Oh. 
So I have a green and a yellow. Green and the orange were at top. The blue and the yellow are put aside. Actually, I'm just going to cut these uh, cut these ones off. They don't get attached to nothing. These two here would. If I wanted to hit <clears throat> do a voice change, then I could use these two wires and put them to another switch and actually connect them to ground, and they would activate another feature. Right now, we're not going to do that. Uh, there's a lot of wiring combinations to those pickups. You even have um, uh, a tap ability. You can tap the coils. There's a little spot in the back of this uh, of, of the circuit board of the uh, of the pickup that you can actually wire a wire onto and make that work. Okay, so these are the two pickups. So this, like I said again, these two here are going to come to the switch. The other two just get put aside. Uh, these ones are going to be coming to here. So I'll cut them about right here. The ground will go there, and then the lead is going to come to the switch here for the two of those. And we have our uh, our bridge ground. So what we're going to do first, I'll prepare all the work off camera, and I'll start the just welding or soldering on the, the capacitor here and the ground and the leads off of that and then I'll reinstall this back into the into the guitar and then we'll continue wiring it once this portion is done so we'll just put this aside here and just work on that for a moment I have to trim the back of that tab a little bit or touch the casing. I could just fold it, but uh, I'll screw it. Yeah. I'm going to hook that out so it's not contacting. I'm going to bring this piece over top. This is going to be my ground lug on this piece there because there's not much surface area that you can put a, a ground wire on that tiny little pot it's the sad thing about these little fellows there but anyhow they did provide this tab at the top for a uh, for ground for grounding and we're going to use it so let's make that work I got a nice, nice bead of solder on there for my other ground wires now. That's pretty. So, first element installed that respects the, uh, the wiring. We're going to bring those two pickups into this hole right there. And uh, we'll put our leads out on this in conjunction with that and with the jack pin that we're going to put out. So let me put this all away, get some, put some water in here, get some other wires. So I've got some black wire for my ground. 
and I got some uh, red bar for my leads rather than yellow like what it is in the schematic but that doesn't matter so first things first is we're gonna run off two uh, two grounds from this and they're gonna serve one is gonna go to the jack in here and the other one is gonna go to the uh, to the volume pot so that's it so let's get that installed shall we So I made a mistake. Uh, I can't install that yet. I still have to install these wires here for the uh, the pickups. This is going to be for the uh, voice change. And those two wires, the uh, orange and the green, have got to be put into that pin there. So I'm obviously going to do that while this is out of the guitar. Otherwise, it would be next to impossible to do a nice job. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to bring the guitar a little bit closer to us. Make sure that we pick up everything that could possibly mar and scratch that finish. You do not want to have to compound your problems in your work any more than what you have to right now. We'll bring that on over. Like that. And what I'm going to do is I'll prepare those two wires. And I'll put this back in the cavity. Now because we're going to be well uh, soldering over top of the guitar now. Um, we're going to introduce a little bit more precaution. And use uh, a cover here to serve as a, a bit of a backdrop in case you drop some solder. I hope you don't do that. I don't want nobody doing that, but again, should it happen, it happens. The wires are gonna fit in the cavity a little bit, something like this. The switch has to be installed like that. And uh, let's get these wires trimmed up, skimmed up. And uh, yeah, that's and good. And I'll let the cat out too, cause she wants to go outside. Okay, so those two ends are stripped up. Uh, we can still use our clamp here. Just be careful now you're using this on top of the guitar. And make sure that there's nothing that's going to stick out metal-wise that could scratch or mark. Just be con conscious of your, of your environment there, of your, of your surface of that instrument, because you really do not want to be dealing with uh, <laughs> more work than what you have to. So same thing as before, we're going to put a little bit of solder on this and then we're going to bring it back together with a, another dab once you put that in the hole. All right. This is so much fun, isn't it? It's like building things. I love it. So much fun. That looks good. Watch the taut tip of that too. You don't want that going in uh, anywhere near the surface. That'll mar up. That'll, that'll mess up your finish pretty pretty fast. So that's where that puppy goes, just like that. And a little dab ought to do ya. Let's find out. Not enough. Close. There we go. That's connected. And we'll connect this side too. So it's a double pull, double throw. So this actually actually adds this redundancy, the fact that we're we're using both sides of that switch. And again, that's a nice solder joint there. Yeah. One of your biggest enemies when it comes to doing uh, electronics like this on a guitar, 
uh, noise why sometimes no signal at all or intermittent is uh, cold solder joints or just bad solder joints and that's why it's very very important to make sure that you have sound solid work all around but you don't see any holes through you don't see any graying you should see a nice shiny f uh, surface when you're uh, when you're done your wiring uh, voila it's going into the guitar now Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, step right up. All right, so. That's that switch. That's the pickup. This one's going to come in over here. That looks good. That's my ground for the bridge. I can bring him out on top. Me for my battery. And these two are going to get put off aside. We're not going to use them. These two, we're going to skin them down. So let's reinstall that, shall we? I'll do that off camera. All right. Switches in. That's good. So what we're going to do now, you can see that I added the uh, the wires, the, the the orange and the green. They're they're well, they're welded in, obviously. Uh, just kind of putting things in order now, trying to get a feel for it. Uh, what I gotta do is I gotta run one of these ground wires over to here. This incidentally is the bridge wire. What I'm gonna do, um, it doesn't need to be this long. I'm gonna cut it really short right over there and it's gonna go on the top of that pot with this wire. But this wire's gotta go through that lug, uh, up and over, and then I'm gonna twist it up with this one, weld it there, and then weld it over there and make that a solid tight fit. So let's, let's do that, shall we? There we go. That's going to be where I'm going to cut it right there. Be careful around the instrument. Don't move too fast when you're working with these tools. You do not want to chip and scratch your finish. It is not an option. So I'm going to draw back quite a bit of the silicone on this. I don't think I'm going to have to do it in some little bits. That's one piece off. That's another piece off. That should be good. That should be fine. So now we'll take this one here. Figure roughly a good spot to cut him would be right about there. Go in and cut him out. Right about there. I'll give it a bit more. Right there. Clean that up. Well, uh, clean it up like that. It's good if you pick up the old pieces as you go along, so like that you don't forget something and gets binded up in uh, one of the pots in the future. That would suck. That would be bad, guy. It's bad. Don't do that. That's bad. Alright, that's cleaned up good. Now, this I'm going to put some solder on it before I put it through. Again, what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to bring a cover over here. Try to work around a few if I have to. Because I really don't want to damage that finish. I sound like a broken record. I know. Fuck. I can't figure it out. All right. That's some good, yeah. Uns, very good. Now we're going to put some heat to that, put some solder to that, and make this whole world a happier, better place. Because everybody wants a bit of solder.
That's good. I would say that that is a success. So, we shall now put this in the little oil and pull it to the top. And we will then solder it. Uh, it is in the oil. Oh, it is on top. No, it is just beside. Attends peu. I will grab the tool and pull it to the top. There we go. That's a winner winner chicken dinner right there. Tell you what. That's great. That's perfect. Perfect. I'm going to do the same thing to the uh, to the wire inside. I'm going to put a bit of solder on that just to give me some a um, little bit of meat to work with. I get inside the uh, put it on top of the pot it's bit like a, it, it, it it adheres so much better if you have a bit of solder on that wire there we go and while I have the covers in place I'm going to go ahead and start to uh, heat up the back of that pot and put a, put a solder weld on it, a solder pool. There we go. That's nice. It's good. Now, bring over this side first. Just like that. That's good. Hold on that position. That's nice. I'm going to walk a solder it to the pot now, to the actual seat that it's in. Oh, tabby thing there, whatever you call it. I don't know. Very small. He's very nice. He's uh, very, very good. Uh, all right. Now I'm going to do the ground wire for the uh, the bridge. Put some solder on that now. Come on, baby. That's to melt. Who that uh pushing too hard on this one? So, moving right along. So I shortened up this wire, the red wire here from this pot to this one. I didn't like it, it was too long. And at the same time, I wanted to splice in another wire here that's gonna go to the switch. So I figured what I'll do is, I'd, I was off camera, I figured I'll do that real quick, it's fast. So now I'm ready to put this, part, this one in here. That's gonna get soldered, welded there. And then this tab here, that'll be my hot up to the switch. Then I'll put my runoff from the center to the jack, and that'll be rock and roll to the speakers. Got a red lead coming off that center. 
we're going to tie that down and uh, then I'll wire down, I'll solder down the, uh, the, the wire beside it that goes to the switch and connects to the tone. Here we go. That's a good one. That's a nice. That's a real nice. Okay, now this one here. It's got a bit of a spring to want to come up, but hold that back. What I'll do is I'll, I'll cut off a piece to shorten the length. It doesn't need to be that long. I don't want to short out on the cavity, on the uh, always pick up your scrap. I don't want to short out on the cap cover of the pot. Yeah, that's much more better. Much more better? That's just that's just plain better. That's better, brother. Brother, that's better. All right. Oh, that's good. So. We have a red out to the jack. Pop that one through. Uh, put the iron down. This is for a switch. I guess what I'll do is I'll clean up all these uh these positions on the switch too because they're still a mess. thing was formally grounded I'm not opposed about grounding it, grounding it again but I think with all the shielding we have in there now it's uh, it's not really required okay the switch is clean so let's put that foam in there now keep that out of the way Let's, wire, let's find our center, install this wire, and then do the pickups. And we'll finish it up with the battery and the, uh, the jack. That's looking better. Yeah. yeah. An inch and a quarter. An inch and a quarter should be fine, yeah? Yeah, an inch and a quarter. So we'll do it in steps. I'll do about three quarters of an inch at a time. That's the first section off. And that's the nice thing about these clippers, you can just kind of move it to the side and it still does a relatively good job. Incidentally, it's my father that uh, taught me everything that I know. And back in his day, he studied conventional electronics back with when it was tubes. And he was still in school when it all went solid state. So he learned solid state and tube technology. So he had the best of both worlds. And he was kind of a little, I guess a little, I guess I am a spitting image of my father because he liked to tackle anything under the sun. It required a little bit of 
a little bit of challenge. And when it came to the sciences, well, he was pretty, pretty, pretty well off there. He, uh, he ended up working in nuclear reactors. So, yeah, I could, uh, I, I could say, you, I think he knew where, what, what he was doing. He had a good head. He was a great mentor. Taught me everything I knew. So there, that's the first one stripped down nice. We'll be able to get a good ground on there. We'll swip that, with, uh, we'll swip it around there, but get a ground there and a hot on there. And we're gonna do with these wires like uh, what we've done with all the others. We're gonna prepare them with a bit of solder, kind of hardens them up. In the ends makes working with them that much more easier. Whoop, that one didn't strip as well. The black, ooh, I think. That's all right. There we go. That's great. Yeah, actually, the the uh, the meter that I'm using, the fluke, that was a gift from my dad when uh. When he found out I was going back to school and going to become a computer technician working with computers. Unfortunately, and the industry changed to the point where you didn't replace or repair anything that was physical. You just threw it away and you bought another one. Things have changed. But it's still very practical when you're working old school projects like this. So, that being said, all right, so uh, let's harden up all these ends. And um, let me see if I got that all together. Yeah, that's great. Harden up all the ends. And then we'll install those to the, uh, uh, at least the grounds and then the hots. Uh, bring us over some protection. Ladies and gentlemen, we're almost finished. Part's gonna come there. All right, so these three wires, wink and blink and nod, are gonna come up to the switch. Now this is a five-way, and theoretically I only need a three-way function. So what I'm gonna do, I'll uh, take my meter out, I'll measure out which pin is hot out, and where I'm going to connect <clears throat> those two pickups to give me, like I said earlier, the, the, the two, three, four selection. Yeah. And then we'll do the battery. All right. Let me do some, run some tests on that switch. It's looking good though. I actually, to be honest with you, I, I took some measurements with my meter and I don't quite figure out exactly how it's working so i want to be sure i'm going to go do some supplemental research on the inner weebs and uh we'll come back to that so right now let's just do the battery thing so here we go all right so i'm going to keep that short i don't need it to be too long if i bring it to here i'm gonna to have to put some heat shrink there and bring a black wire that's going to come out that way so that means that when the battery's on and the connector, if it gets pulled out, it's going to be kind of limited by the amount of black wire I have here. I'll bring it out that way a little bit so like that I have uh, some more play. So, let's make that work. So, um, yeah.
Now, this black wire is going to come out this side here. It's going to be attached to the jack plate. But I'm not going to put that wire very tight. I'm going to leave a lot of space here so that that cable can be taken, that battery can be taken out without any kind of uh, stress on the wires. So, like that. And then these ones go over there, like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fix a piece of foam in there and pretty well hold that down because that's as low as I want that to go now. I told you guys earlier I was going to put a piece of foam in. So here, here's the idea. I just want to use a piece of soft foam, compressible foam, that you can pop in behind the switch and just kind of hold all those wires down into place. That was that's my that's my goal here. Just the compression fit of it will do the job. It's in place. Still have enough movement here that to get that in and out, put a battery on it, put it back in there, and it shouldn't disrupt the, the these wires too much. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish up uh, on this end here, the business end of um, the connection which is the jack, and there's going to be three connections to make. So, let's get that done. Connections inside look free from the walls, meaning they won't short out. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, we have successfully installed the jack. This is looking great. Now we have to just install the battery, put some foam wrap around it, and it's all good to go. Let's get to it. All right. So ready to test this out theoretically when I plug this in uh, it should lower the hum and the buzz because when I turn on my amp there's gonna be a hum and a buzz I should have connectivity between the negative lug here and ground there that will indicate that the switching mechanism mechanism is working for the for the battery for the active circuit and by touching this red wire here I should have volume control there and I should also have tone so let's uh, try that out Got the amp here, ready to go. There, <clears throat> you should be able to hear that. That's the end of the cable. It's my amp, so that little bit of hum and buzz you hear, when I put it in here, that should be quite a bit. There you go. Now if I touch the grounded areas, I don't hear anything. 
the speaker. But if I touch this wire here, that's my signal out. That's what's going to be connected to the switch. The volume works good. Tone does a good job too. You can hear hear the different frequencies coming in and out. So I know that all works fine. Now we're going to just check, make sure I have a ground between the negative here and the negative here. So I'll know my battery is going to be powered on when the cable gets plugged into it. Again, there's nothing off the tip. Oh yeah, that's still in the amp, eh? We'll shut the amp off because that doesn't need to be on. All right. So this should be my negative here. And this. Perfect. If I take that out, cable's now removed. I have nothing. Let's wire up those pickups. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is going to be hot here. I know for a fact that's hot, so I'll go ahead and wire that one right now. So that's where it's going. That's a good well, that's a good solder. Alright, so it goes like one, two, three. Neck, middle, bridge. I'm not going to use the neck position because of the restrictions I have with the five-way switch and just two pickups being used. So right now there'll be a dead spot, but what I'll do as I'll install this one neck position or the middle position uh, same thing as before by the way this is where a third hand would be fantastic And finally, install the bridge pickup. There you go. This is completely wired. There's uh, nothing more to be done in this cavity. The only thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to... Uh, Put something to accommodate the battery in here so it doesn't slosh around. Probably use some foam with that. Now, what we're going to have to do now is to take the back plate that went on this, which uh, this is the outside, believe it or not, still has the original labels. This side, we're going to coat it with copper like this. And right to the edge, we'll cut that clean so like that when you install that, on the back it's going to make like a little metal box essentially built in copper and that's going to really keep everything super quiet so uh let's copperize this
There you go. That's done. That's groovy. Yeah. So if if that's done correctly. I should just pop right over top like that. And there's no sign of anything on the outside that any kind of work was done to this to the level we did. So what I'll do now is I'll uh, take the cover back off. We'll get ourselves some um, a battery, some foam to put the battery in. And uh, we'll be able to close this thing up. And to uh, put some strings on it, make some rock and roll, eh? puppy out so there's our little box again it should just pop right in there like this not too intrusive there's a wire that passes underneath of it so that's okay it still brings it flush with the back show that out just make sure yeah that's perfect that's perfect Battery connected. Uh, you're not going to be moving that much on stage, buddy. Not my brother, anyway. Not you, Steven. Yet. You're not going to be bouncing around like a little bebopper, that's for sure. Pop this puppy on. Does that work? That fits. It's actually so close to the top that I'm thinking, uh, Huh. I don't really think I need to put anything. I mean, it's really, it's, it's right there. I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll just cut off a sliver of this. This, this actually compresses pretty good. It's not too, uh, too firm of a, of a foam. I'll put out a piece just to save in. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. That's that's where that goes. Anyhow, it's not pretty. It's functional, and that's what counts. So, uh, hell yeah, let's just. Put that into place and the screws and we'll put the strings on it and we'll make it the rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. So I put the back uh, the back plate back on, turned it over, tried it out, and I had a problem. Seems to me, uh, no, it didn't seem to me. It was evident that I had those two pickups uh, reversed. So I opened it back up and I swap the two whites on the switch so anyway here you go so here's what we got we got a uh, my amp is on uh, volume I don't know if you guys can hear anything the tone up hear a bit of something there now so I just got a little bit of this is a metal spring I still have the plastic covers on the pickup so there's no danger of my hurting or marring the finish but I just want to give you a guys a, a, a an indicator to hear that to, to let you see that it works. That's pickup number one. That one's not on. This one's not even wired. Well, it's making a click sound, but it's not wired. Uh, it's the microphonic sound being picked up by these two. This is these two. Third position is just this one. And fourth position is the same thing. And then in the fifth position is dead because there's nothing wired to it. So I didn't put it in the in the center of the two, three, four like I wanted to. 
It's on the one, two, three, with a four like the three, and uh, a dead spot at the fifth. The uh, the tone, obviously, you can hear the the, the 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 tone works, and the voice change too. If I pull up the tone knob. That also changed. So, electronically speaking, guys, this was a success. Let's put some strings on it, power it up to the amp, and see what she sounds like. Folks, so the guitar's been delivered to the owner. Steve, if you like, uh, it's all yours, man. First impressions? I love it. Sounds absolutely amazing. Let us hear it, man. <laughs> There you go, another satisfied customer. New pickets have been installed, it's been grounded out. Client seems to be okay with it, so uh, got ourselves a winning success story here. Uh, if you like what you see, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. I got more videos coming, and uh, next one we'll do a setup of the guitar, show you how I actually installed the strings and did the intonation and made that work. Thanks for checking us out, stay tuned, more to come. Ciao.